I'd like to start this week with an email. An email? Are you copying Corey? <laughs> Am I allowed to do that, Corey? You can do it. Can yeah, I do go a ahead. Terrible Scottish accent. I'm just going to look into this camera this is, okay. and uh, just look angrily. This is from Jennifer, and it says, Hi, I've been watching the three of you for a while now, and I've absolutely been loving the podcast. Hell I'm really yeah. excited for the premiere on YouTube tonight, as it starts as soon as I leave work, meaning I can watch it on the train home. I learn something new every episode, and although I usually feel a bit like Jamp, not knowing what's going on, James, how do you feel about that? Uh, thoroughly represented. <laughs> <laughs> it's always really interesting and funny. I look forward to tonight, uh, all your future episodes. Keep up the good work, guys. Hell Jennifer. yeah. Oh. If it wasn't clear from that email, we started doing... We're on YouTube. Yeah, we're on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. We're on YouTube. Videos. So if, you've, if you want to watch us, do it. It's on YouTube. Please do. Every Sunday night, which means you can watch it a whole day early. Wow. wow. Isn't that nice? Well, more like half a day because it goes up on the Monday morning yeah, and it's Sunday night. Well, I mean, whatever. Who's up at 6 a.m., really? It's actually less than 12 hours, so... Quite a lot of people, actually, Corey. Probably you as well. No, I wake up at 8, I roll out of bed, then I How, go to work. What's that like? It's awful. Mm. I bet it is. Shall start, we start the episode? Start the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cupfer. Hello. Howdy. I almost ran out of breath. Yeah, you did. <sighs> <sighs> this week, we'll be talking about pretty milkmaids and snorting sores. This sounds... Snorting what? Sores. 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 Right. You know, like As a sore, like an, like an ulcer. Oh, a sore, okay. A so sore. Uh, oh, no, sores. Like so an ulcer. A sore. Hang on, so snorting. Not a saw. Snorting. Sores. As in, like, you've got a sore in your nose and you accidentally snort the sore up your nose. Yes. Is that actually what we're talking about? But not accidentally. Deliberately snorting. Deliberately snor snorting. Not your own sores. Other be I'll get it. I'll get into it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Smallpox is a disease. Yes, it is. Which most people today will have not had to deal with. Thanks to the widespread use of vaccines, we've now essentially eradicated the disease from humans. That's exciting. Yeah, but that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That was a while ago. Yeah. 2016. So what is smallpox? Um, pox, but small. You're damn right. Is that actually correct? No, no, oh. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> is it worse than chicken pox? Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's much worse than chicken pox. I thought so. I mean, we've all had chicken pox <laughs> here, much and we're all alive. My calculations are correct. <laughs> the thing is, look, we've all had chicken pox here, and we're all alive. If we'd all had smallpox, one of us wouldn't be here. Has it got a one-third death rate? Is that why, Corey? A thirty percent death rate. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's good, wasn't it? So, how does it differ from chicken pox? Lot. It's not even the same virus at all. Okay. It's, it's totally different. <laughs> it just uh, shares pox. It it just gives you pox, which are like little little sores. I see. Mm -hmm. So it's been around for a long time, at least 1,500 years. Uh, there's no mention of it in ancient that's a, Greek that's a texts. While. It's a long time, isn't it? Mm. But they did have it in Rome, supposedly. It was one of the deadliest diseases uh, known to man, and it kind of showed up around about the 3rd century in the Mediterranean and China. Um, and like I said, it's caused by a virus, and it's an orthopoxovirus, which is really good. because It's, it's, easy, to, it's easy to remember. Orthopox. Orthopox. Does that mean that it's got pox? It makes yeah, it pox. Makes, makes pox, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pox good. being little spots on your skin. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It all, it all adds up, isn't it? Um, and humans are the only known reservoir for the virus, which basically means we don't know any an other animal yeah. that gets smallpox. Well, that's good. At least we can't spread it to... That's super interesting. Other places. <laughs> that's really interesting. I thought you were about to say something more. I don't know. You just fizzled out. I thought I was going to say something more. Yeah. It's transmitted from person to person, uh, and an infection usually happens by inhaling stuff. The person? Well, not not an entire person, <laughs> just like um, just like spit respiratory droplets. So essentially, mm. spit oh, and just uh, doing a big fat line of someone else's to... spit. No, oh. no, like breathing in uh, someone else's like breath. Essentially, oh. uh, gets like little bits of the virus sure. stuck in Lovely. inside of you. Yeah, which isn't good. Uh, it mostly just infects your mucosal membranes which yeah. is exactly what it sounds like it's bits of you that have mucus on i yeah. think i have a, a currently a mucosal membrane infection just in case you wanted to know that what you makes you think keep that? on that side i've of the had desk. i've had like a well it doesn't matter actually i don't need to share this carry on no, no, no. <laughs> hold on hold on hold on what the hell is going on do we need to know <laughs> no <laughs> why would you mention it well i is don't it, know can, i just it, could i can i can do you have smallpox 
I might have smallpox, yeah. I'm the first known case. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Luke will not be around, for he will be dead. <laughs> We're going to have to look for a replacement. Uh, historical data suggests that it's uh, smallpox is not very transmissible. It's just in high populations that it... We do but, live all squished mm. together, so... Yeah, we really do, don't we? Yeah. Mm. yeah that's, Who that's discovered smallpox? Do you know? I don't know. It's that's kind of... A shame. A, well, I'm sorry. It's been around for a long time. That's the thing. So it's not... It's right. not something that someone needs to discover. It's not like the common cold. Right. Yeah. Where, you know. Oh, it is like the common it cold. It is like the common like, cold. Where it's what? No, no, it forever. is like the common cold because it's just kind of always around. Generally, the people that have got close contact for a long time with the infected people are the most at risk. And generally how it, how it happens is there's a 10 to 14 day incubation period. In that time, the infected person then develops severe symptoms with fever and headaches and other, other awful things. Ooh, not fun. Not fun. No. No. Uh, so they get a rash on their face, mucous membranes, and other extremities. Mucous like membranes mm. is like my favourite disgusting <laughs> term for body parts. It's should we talk about part- Should we talk about mucous membranes? Oh yeah. yeah. So mucus, like a, a yeah. mucous membrane is like a part of your body that exudes mucus. Uh, that would be your nose. Is your throat a mucous membrane? Um, Probably. Yeah. 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 Your nostrils. Uh, your vagina that's a mucous membrane my vagina my vagina your, is not <laughs> a mucous membrane is a mucous membrane yeah i think that's most of the mucous membranes i wonder if the eyes are mucous membranes yeah maybe probably let's, let's move on again i keep They're on bit, doing these asides that <laughs> eyes need are, to be in there. eyes are a bit gross aren't they <laughs> hi guys i'm ill and also your vagina is a mucous <laughs> membrane continue <laughs> carry on <laughs> <laughs> smallpox has been around for a long time and the longest prevention efforts that we know about go back long time as well mm. uh back to the 10th century at least in china in fact mm. and what people would do is uh inoculate people nasally uh with material from smallpox lesions by snorting sores yeah so essentially how they did that was uh powder up some sores and make people snort them powder them up how do you powder them up oh like yeah like doing a line of something essentially yeah like getting scabs like they get wait a- you just get a scab and make and then you grind like, them up. Oh, cut it okay. up. Okay, I was confused, but that makes sense. Probably grind it up. Roll, like, up you know. roll up a banknote. I was like, how do you just get a sore off? Yeah, ancient China. It? That's what they were doing. They were rolling up the little Chinese banknotes, and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> they're probably been like bamboo. Well, or something, first they got their it? bank cards and uh, and then cut they a line. Cut their bank cards. <laughs> <laughs> just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> People would then get a mild case of the disease. So that's and, essentially mm. like a vaccine. Yeah, it is. It? Well, yeah. it's it's like a vaccine, except with the actual thing. Well, it's like a live rather than a deactivated version of well, the illness. Mm. See, the thing is with most uh, vaccines, even if they are the actual thing, they weaken it. Yes. So in this case, yeah. it's um, it's called variolation. Right. Which is using the same virus in with no real change to it, just in a little bit. It's like a controlled infection. Right. Mm. More dangerous, I assume. Much, much yeah. more dangerous. Much yeah. More. Wait, so that means that the person who we credit with inventing vaccines didn't invent vaccines. No, no, he didn't. Of course he didn't. Wow. Stole someone else's idea. If you idea. think a white man invented... It's like the whole of science. If you think a white man invented something, he didn't. My favorite white man inventing something or discovering something story is that at some point, I can't remember what it was, but at some point a scientist declared that he had found... Sorry, this is going to be a very vaginary episode for some reason. Um, <laughs> at some point, this man scientist declared that he had discovered and confirmed the existence of the clitoris. And then all the women were like, all the females were like, yeah, we, we, we we've been new, sir. We <laughs> we're good. <laughs> we're aware. I would much rather if uh, women just suddenly found it themselves and were, were, were shocked and <laughs> wow. pleased to find out. <laughs> Thanks, white man. What? I didn't know Where I had did that. Get that. <laughs> this magic pleasure button. Thank you, science. Yeah. yeah. So if you're ever wondering what you can thank the white men for, it's, it's y- your clitoris. clitoris. It's yeah, a, they Corey, found your it clitoris. for you. It's you amazing that men. one they found so it for your you. clitoris. So that one man managed to find the clitoris, yet every man after that <laughs> has failed. <laughs> totally failed. Spectacularly. <laughs> oh, awful. <laughs> Let's carry on again. Uh, keep on having this asides. This is the the, the theme That's of actually, the episode is my asides are going to be disgusting. I apologize in advance. I have an aside. Uh, my favorite uh, person discovering something that they didn't discover is the discovery of penicillin. Because penicillin was being used for a long time. It was it's made by mold and people mm. would just rub it on themselves to yeah. you know to fix themselves. Mm. And a scientist saw that and was like, I'm gonna take credit. You for know that. what? I'm gonna invent that. So he isolated it, I, I guess. Mean, yeah, but if it's he, already well, he invented penicillin, the medicine. 
He if didn't invent mushrooms, he, but he invented <laughs> penicillin. He isolated it. Yes, but he's he's but he invented been, penicillin. In, like, this, in the same way, but it's in the same way that this that this guy invented vaccines just by doing what other people have been doing. Sure, just in a slightly well, more refined yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. The, the difference is is that when you do penicillin in the way that. So is it Alexander, no, Alexander Graham Bell? Who, who's penicillin? He <laughs> 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 invented the telephone and vaccines separately. Um, no, but the difference is, is that when, when they did uh, penicillin and when they, I assume, did vaccines, it's patentable because there's a method rather than just picking up some, some fungus. So yeah, that's that why thing. they're credited with it is because they allow Big Pharma to pay loads of money. I'll join uh, in. I like, assume. I don't know that's necessarily true, but I assume. <laughs> I don't think Big Farmer was quite as big in the 17 and 1800s, but... uh was Little yeah. Farmer. Was little farmer. <laughs> Wait, does that mean that Big Mid- Pox is coming? If Little Farmer became Stop. Big Farmer, Little Pox will become no, Big Pox. We squashed Small Pox. So I'm going to move on <laughs> to... To get big. Run, but the 17th... No, not the 17th century. The 18th century in Europe and wherever Turkey is. I don't know where it is. <laughs> It's like near you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it's joining not, the European this, Union. This is not a geography not, podcast. Not this, like is, this, political this is not geography. They're in the process of either joining the European Union or they have joined the European Union. I'm not sure. It's next to Syria anyway. I mean, geographically, I don't care. I don't know. It's next to Syria. Nope. Don't know. Don't even know where Syria is. So don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know where Syria I'm gonna is. I'm going to have to start a podcast called <laughs> Jog Guys. <laughs> is it a We're running podcast? Geo guys. No, it's not a running podcast. It's a geography podcast. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, uh, Lady Montague, uh, who is the wife of an English ambassador, uh, she. That's not a very, what else does she achieve? You can't introduce her as being someone's wife, Corey. <laughs> it was the 1700s, honestly. <laughs> Did she achieve anything by being the wife of a, by being oh, the wife of a guy? She's oh, that's basically all she's gonna be. Oh, I tried. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried. It's not feminism. It's not me. Fantastic. Then it's the 1700s. So you can't blame <laughs> a time, Corey. <laughs> For, for sexism? Yes, I can. Well, you can play the people. Of the time. Of, of the, the time. <laughs> <laughs> In that time period. Shut up. <laughs> so, Lady Mary Wortley Montague um, was very, the wife of a... Very attractive <laughs> name, by the way. <laughs> Wortley. You're going to really love what she did. Uh, she was the wife of... Did she an... invent warts? No, <laughs> she didn't. She Despite was the wife the of an English ambassador. People had been using warts for centuries. The Ottoman just, Empire. She just loved skin protrusions. She was the wife of an English ambassador in the Ottoman Empire, which then became Turkey. I do know some geography. Uh, she observed inoculation. Oh, that wasn't geography. <laughs> it's history then, whatever. <laughs> See, I couldn't even There's tell you crossover. about crossover. She was in Turkey. I know of the existence of Turkey, therefore I know geography. <laughs> the, the, Ottoman, the Ottoman Empire became Turkey. That's a... Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well done. You can, you can, <laughs> you can be the guest on my first episode of Jog Guys. Oh, what, Jog Guys does not include... You're, you're making your own podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm making it with people who prove themselves to be good at geography. Luke, and the, the, the entire point of this podcast is that you guys are not, are not good at science. Okay. Well, you've just proven yourself to be vaguely good at geography. Therefore, you're not in my podcast anymore. <laughs> Talking yourself out of a job, Corey. Good God. Do you want to know what Lady Mary Wortley Montague did? More than anything. Other than her husband. <laughs> yeah, right. Go on. What did she do? Uh, so she saw inoculation in Turkey and her son was maybe at the risk of getting some smallpox. So she decided to test it on him as well. Ah, very clever. Yeah. So basically what they did was they just scratched people up and uh, shoved some smallpox scratched in there. Scratched people up. Yeah. I think Corey means scratch off people who, scratch bits off people who were already infected. No, I mean uninfected people. They scratched them up and shoved smallpox in there. That's oh. exactly what I imagined. Yep. <laughs> and uh, just waited for them to, so basically I've actually got a, I've got a whole, she described I've it in a letter. i a petri dish of smallpox and I'm going to scratch <laughs> yeah, you up. Yeah, for you guys to try it. Uh, they used like nuts, Rub it in like uh, nutshells. Scrub. To do all the scratching. Because yeah. they didn't have knives yet. I mean, they did have knives. It was the well, Why did they use nuts then? I don't know. It was turkey. I don't know what they do over there. Weird. Yeah. But they held they held like the smallpox sores in, in like uh like the pus and stuff in little nutshells. Apparently. Yum. This is what she wrote. She wrote a really nice letter. Time for a salad. But it's it's very long, so I'll give you a, a little excerpt of her letter. So she was basically writing a letter to a friend to tell her friend what happened with her son. The old woman comes with a nutshell full of the matter of the best sort of smallpox and asks what veins you please to have opened. She immediately rips open that you offered her with a large needle, which gives you no more pain than a common scratch, and puts into the vein as much venom as can lie upon the head of her needle, and after, binds up the little wound with a hollow bit of shell, and in this manner opens four or five veins. 
Effectively, they had smallpox parties. That's really cool. Effectively, like translating from like you know an yeah. upper class English woman. Yeah. Uh, you you would you would have a chicken pox party, but for smallpox. We actually did used to have chicken pox parties at school when one person would get chicken pox and they would all catch it off each other. Yeah. Chicken pox party. Really? Yeah. Can you catch, I I've you heard can catch chicken pox, can't you? That's why you stay off school. I've heard that some yeah, parents no, do that. And then they like, when one kid gets chicken pox. Smush them all together. Or, or like, yeah, all the parents in the neighborhood like, oh, go, oh, yeah. sleep over time. Yeah, well, you want to do it when they yeah. don't get out the way. Otherwise they get shingles. And yeah, it gets die. more yeah. dangerous as you grow up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's the same like, you know, class of virus that causes chicken pox, uh, herpes. Mouth and ulcers then, because mouth ulcers are also herpes. Yeah, so there's different, mm. like... Uh, glandular fever. I glandular think. fever, yeah. yeah. So that's Epstein-Barr uh, bar mm. virus. Um, kissing disease. Wow. Yeah. So when we were like four years old, five years old, all the kids were giving each other herpes. Yeah. And that was just fine. That's brilliant. I mean, your parents wanted parents it's a herpes party. It. They're like, get it out of the way. Suppose that's just an orgy. No, Corey, it's no, not a, an orgy. A herpes, it's no, a, not... Herpes, a herpes party no. is an orgy. Mm. Or an orgy is no, a herpes party. stop talking. I'm... I'm okay. All right. <laughs> fine. Fine. I'll continue. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, the, she then goes on to say that essentially uh, the kids are fine. Uh, eight days they're playing and then they're in bed for mm. two or three days. And then they're, you know, after eight days after that, they're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They good. get over the smallpox. Good which as is, gold. Which is really good. It's a pretty weird thing they to get, like they get over it. It's a pretty weird thing to like have discovered because it's not, exa- it doesn't exactly follow logic when you don't understand how the immune system works yeah Mm. so like how how did they work that out that's weird it's a weird one probably the people that survived smallpox Mm. didn't get it again yes so you kind of just learn it there's like something right okay if If there's a pattern of getting it when you're young and then never having it again right they're just like right give it to people as early as possible don't yeah not necessarily as early you want to be old enough Out to the be able to and into the small box yeah you want to be old yeah. enough to like the small box vaccine still isn't given to pregnant women yeah or people that are vulnerable because it might it have it might have been spread like a it might have been spread like a like an old wives tale that actually turned out to be true yeah, yeah. it could be yeah and the old wives were the ones that were doing it yeah that's true yeah so it had a 0.5 to 2 percent death rate this which is bad mm. but it's much better than the 30 percent death 30%, rate of small box. yeah and but i was thinking like that death rate you, you that's for everyone that you give the like the vaccine the inoculation to mm. but how many people are actually infected with smallpox because if you're in, if you're vaccinating more people than you yes. then people are getting smallpox your box, 2% death rate might still be more people yeah. than would normally die of smallpox exactly that's well, oh, yeah. let's just hope that that's not the case <laughs> and carry on the story <laughs> nowhere says that i was just mm. i was curious about this yeah that's like the i've been researching a lot today about the because of greta thunberg this is very off topic mm. but because of greta thunberg talking about um how the united states needs to stop polluting and the united states senators are going what about china like because they don't want to do anything and so i was researching about um per capita pollution Mm. in different countries. And the United States is pretty high up the list. The UK is really quite low. Is it? Uh, Yeah, we have like six, nearly six times less than the worst polluting country. Um, And we have about almost three times less than the US per capita. So well done, UK. Good job. And where's China on that list? Uh, China's higher than us, but lower than the United States. Yeah, because China's better than the United States in most things. More efficient. No, I just mean in terms of, and when it comes to climate, when it comes to climate, China's making actual action to stop it. Yeah. Not to stop the climate, to stop the climate yeah. change, whereas the US is still stuck. Yeah. So the worst is Qatar. Uh, and then the United States has the- 16.5, I think it's tons per capita. Uh, and then you have the UK right down at, oh, I have to keep scrolling. Very exciting. Oh, that's uh, a good sign. 6.5. Uh, but China is 7.5. So they're a little bit worse than the UK, but they're also an economically developing country. We're, we're more economically developed than China. Uh, so we should be doing more. And the United States is more than double as bad as China per capita. Really? So well done, Greta. You're on the right track. Great. Keep, keep doing the thing you're doing, please. Uh, so the lady goes on to say, there's no example of anyone that's died in it. And you may believe I'm very well satisfied of the safety of the experiment since I intend to try it on my dear little son. Lovely. He was like five years old and she just tested this on him. Yeah, it's like, I mean, that's, that is the ultimate like proof of your conviction of your belief. It's like, it's like the scientists we talked about early on in the, in the series about people who, who experimented on themselves to prove things that they couldn't get sign off to actually do some studies on. To do on. some actual studies on, yeah. And then they turned out to be correct and, or well, some of them did. And uh, we now have amazing things that we wouldn't have otherwise had they not done that mm. or we would have had them a lot later. 
it is fantastic. However, I don't really know if I enjoy the treatment of children in this entire process because people would just test <laughs> things on kids. Like, okay, in this case, it's her kid, you know, rich kid. That's fine. That's effectively it's not, not fine. Well, I mean, look, it's this, it's the equivalent of today's parents, Dumb you know, deciding kid. to use um, homeopathic remedies on their kids that have got terminal cancer rather than, you know, chemotherapy. But uh, it, it's the same thing. I guess. But you'll find later on the actual development of vaccines was was not necessarily very good. I mean, what other option did they have back then? Try it on yourself, man. Don't try it on a kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got all these tests. Take a Barry Marshall these, these, route and try these, it on yourself. These trial runs. So in this procedure, a lancet or a needle was used to deliver a subcutaneous dose of smallpox to a susceptible person. What is sub, 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 subcutaneous below your skin? Oh, okay, thanks. I yeah. knew that. Uh, so essentially what happened is uh, this, this lady brought it back to England and they started doing it. This doctor from the 18th century, Peter Kennedy, described it as such. They scarred the wrists, legs, and forehead of the patient, placed a fresh and kindly pock in each incision, and bound it there Ugh. for eight or ten days. After this time, the patient was credibly informed. The patient would then develop a mild case of smallpox, recover, and thereafter be immune. Now, I don't know what credibly Wait. informed means, informed but I really hope afterwards? they told them... Yeah, I don't know. They, they, they talk I hope they're aware going into it. Yeah, they talk weird in the 1700s, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to hope that means Let's something completely different. Let's give them the benefit different. of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. So that's called variolation, and it was controversial at the time, but mm. obviously it kind of worked. As I said, 0.5 to 2% mortality rate, which is... Mm. Uh-huh. That could be, could be, could be worse. I, I'm quite disappointed that w- the people in Turkey and the people in the United Kingdom stopped doing the version where you like scrape up a bit of someone's scab and snort it up your nose. I think that's much more interesting. I mean, that, that was China that was doing that. Like, they could still be doing it today. We don't yeah. know. Have you guys heard of Edward Jenner? Uh, no. Wait, Kylie Jenner or what? He, which, one a, of, which one, which of, one the of the Kardashians is this? <laughs> he's a better Jenner than watch any, the of the, any of the other Jenners. Uh, you guys know what vaccines are, right? Yes. Y- yes. This man basically invented them. You mean uh, did patented he? them? Oh, no, he invented vaccines. Oh, as in got, packaging yeah. it into an actual thing you could take and inject. Yeah, so the, so before it was variolation. It was using a live, completely live, right. normal virus. Yes. Okay. And Edward Jenner did something a little bit different. Just like me, every YouTube video. I think Edward Jenner was slightly <laughs> more influential than you'll ever be, Luke. Oh, that nah, mean cult- nah, I'm gonna, cultural I'm, impact, I'm gonna, Edward I'm gonna Jenner. I'm going to do one of those Luke tweets that says, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cultural impact, Luke Cutford, and then Edward Jenner, inventor of the vaccination, and I'm much higher than he was. Just save, no. save, it, save it for the side guys Twitter. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. So Edward Jenner was born in Berkeley, England in 1749. It was, was a long a time ago. ago. Yeah, it yeah. was a while ago. Yeah, wasn't it? When he was 13, he was apprenticed to an apothecary, Daniel Ludlow, and later a surgeon, uh, George Hardwick, in Sodbury, which is nearby. Why does England have such Sodbury. weird place names? Yeah, Sod Sodbury. It. Oh, I'll just sod it. Call it Sodbury. So he observed that people who caught cowpox while working with cattle were known to not catch smallpox. Cowpox. Cowpox. We'll come to that later. <laughs> cowpox. And it's okay. later right now. So cowpox is a virus caused by... Uh, Cows. Cows. Yeah, well, no. Okay, so cowpox is a disease caused by a virus similar to smallpox. But it affects cows, as as you'd expect from the name. Uh, so it causes sores on their ulcers. Ulcers? On their udders. <laughs> <laughs> Makes their ulcers That's sore. Like, I can't imagine a oh, worse no. place on any physical body to yeah. get a sore than on an udder. Yeah, it's essentially a nipple. It's that on your, is, it, yeah. It's like a droopy nipple yeah. that's now got like a, warts all over it. Elongated nipple. That's just the worst. What if your uh, baby needs a drink? Well, and you've got warty udders. Ow, 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 yeah. ow, ow, ow. Oh, you're fed. Okay, so good. It's actually more common in rodents, apparently. What, warty udders? But no. <laughs> cow what, cowpox. Cowpox. Yeah. Cows. Oh, why are they called it cowpox? Because we only saw it in cows, didn't we? Very silly. Because we domesticated them. So yeah. we're not really mm. looking at the rats to see yeah. if, mm, do their tits have a. Have sores on them. People were generally quite scared of rats, weren't they? I suppose they were. And they should have been. They carried the plague. They carried the plague. That's it. Yeah. And their little backpacks. <laughs> but even worse, they carried warts. <laughs> so cowpox can be transferred to humans. Um, and all it does is cause a localized sore, which is just a little ulcer on your hand or wherever you touch. Oh, on your actual skin. Well, yeah. Where Ow. else is it going to be? I don't know. Usually it's like on your lips or something. But that's but like a normal. That's, that's worse. News flash, James. Your lips a, are skin. Why are you kissing different, cow udders? Different. T- <laughs> <laughs> I've never had cow box. <laughs> he's, 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 so he's practicing. Let's make, make this clear. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, um, if you if you got like a bit an abrasion or a broken skin, the virus gets in, and that's where it'll have a sore just there. But it doesn't transport around the body. No, it doesn't, and it doesn't really transfer. That's nice of it. Yeah, no, it it, it doesn't transfer um, to very, other people. No, very easily to other. Yeah. What if you like high five, but you've both got cut hands? You've got to have broken skin, <laughs> and you've got a big wart on your hand. Well, then playing the obviously, ultimate in that obviously situation then. you're going to get cowpox. Ultimate cow prank on your friend just like slightly cut their hand. Hey man, high them. five. Haha, <laughs> now you've got uh, cowpox. Hey man, cut your hand real quick. Yeah, cut your hand real quick. High five. No, yeah. it's when you're going in for the high five you quickly get your other hand and slash them with a knife and then finish I, the high five. I think five. if you slash your friend's hand with a knife they would not continue the high five. No, I think, I think that if they're a, a, a good friend they'd, they'd carry it out. So, <laughs> so the disease clears up and potentially leaves a scar but it's basically harmless which is nice. That is nice. Hmm. Yeah. So Jenner noticed that people that, you know, had cowpox didn't get smallpox. And he thought there was a connection back when he was 13, but um, Mm. no one really listened to him because he was a 13 year old. Wow. Mm. It's exactly like Greta Thunberg. Well, I don't think he was. I don't think he was quite telling everyone. He was probably just like, (laughs) he was in in Congress and they were making fun of him. (laughs) And he was holding up his little warty hand and trying to offer all the congressmen high fives. He, he didn't have and cowpox. Slashing them oh, open the way. Like, and that's nah, why nah, they didn't nah. listen to him. He, he didn't have cowpox at the time, I should point out. He didn't have cowpox. Oh, I, no, it's, it's not on record, no. Yeah. So of him he, having cowpox so when he was 13. Uh, a smallpox epidemic occurred and he advised the local cattle workers. This is when he was an actual doctor, you know, when he was an adult. He advised the cattle workers to be inoculated, but they told him that they had cowpox before, so they're fine. They don't need to have it. And mm. they were right. And they were right. Um, and that confirmed his childhood suspicion. And he then went in to study mm. cowpox a little bit more. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. And he presented a paper on it to uh, the local medical society. That's really interesting nice. because it's like with smallpox being such a horribly deadly thing. Yeah. You can just inoculate yourself with something really benign. Like a cow. Yes. <laughs> like a cow. Like a cow. You can cut open your hand and go and touch a cow udder. And then you don't get the deadly thing. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. It must really be bad for people that have got like a really bad phobia of cows. It's like a life and death situation. That's a very specific phobia. Yeah. I mean, like, most phobias are incredibly specific. That's kind I, of the point. I, I guess. <laughs> so does that mean that the smallpox and the cowpox virus are like the smallpox is only only very marginally different? Meaning that the same antibodies can, can break yeah. it down. Yeah. And so there's like cowpox is just or whatever smallpox and cowpox's recent ancestor is there's very little difference between them but one's horrifically deadly to humans and one is very not not deadly yes and that wow. you find that a lot with uh viruses bacteria mm. Mm. there are so you've got e coli in you right now like I've, i'm sure i've said this before you got e coli yeah. in you right now that are fine yeah they're just chilling they're not doing anything bad but then there's also pathogenic e coli right which will kill you uh so the the difference between being deadly and not deadly is very, very fine. So there was already a kind of public understanding, clearly, that cowpox caused a resistance to smallpox in mm. some way. Um, so Among cow workers. Just about around anyone that had cowpox. Yes. Oh, you I mean, mean the, cow, <laughs> the cow workers understood it. I mean, if yeah, if, I guess if you had cowpox as well. Yeah, so uh, that kind of comes up in the idea of the beautiful milkmaid, which was apparently... Uh, an image that was just frequently used in art and literature at the time. So people generally knew, not just ca- uh, cow workers, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> cow hands? Farmers? Maybe? Cow, cow people. Um, <laughs> cow shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> Cows and their cow workers. Um, yeah, so uh, the beautiful milkmaid was, yeah, an image that was around a lot. So clearly everyone knew about cow workers not getting smallpox. Wait, and that's a leap. It's not because There's they were pretty because they didn't have pock marks. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> everyone else was people, hang on. Remember, everyone else people was ugly. who are pretty Problems, and people who have cowpox are not mutually exclusive groups. No, people who are pretty and people who don't have smallpox are mutually exclusive. So the message you're trying to say is you're beautiful if you don't have smallpox. <laughs> have you seen they get pock marks? Ooh. So you're saying everyone's beautiful until they get smallpox. Huh? But that's a very small amount of people. So everyone's beautiful. That's a nice message. Chance to make it. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Okay. Unless you've got smallpox, in which case... Unless you've got smallpox, which uh, no one has. In which case you are the absolute opposite of beautiful. <laughs> Ugly, <laughs> disgusting. Two separate groups. <laughs> and you... Beauty card revoked. <laughs> so in 1796, uh, Sarah Nelms, Nelms? Nelms? Sarah Nelms? Sarah Nelms? Sarah. In 1776, Sarah. Sarah. Who was a local milkmaid, uh, she got cowpox and she went to Jenner for treatment. 
and Jenner uh, did what any man would do and uh, scratched some of the cow box stuff off of uh, off of the girl and <laughs> what anyone <laughs> would do. idea of a lovely date. <laughs> and then uh, and then took the eight year old son of his gardener, who just clearly happened to be around, and uh, just infected him with cowpox right this is the Love story name. i know is yeah of a person infecting like someone they knew son yeah with smallpox what? like it, his gardener as well so that the issue for me is that it's not someone of equal social standing he takes any poor kid the closest poor kid that he finds <laughs> and it's, he's taking tiny tim and he's like all right kid let's let's see what happens let's go do you think that's how it happened or do you think the gardener was just like yeah all right even if the gardener was like yeah all right the kids eight maybe do it on yourself if you're so sure of it jenner Okay. When was this? This was 1796. I don't, yeah. I think they would have been like, kid. Eh. I think, I mean, eight years old in 1796 was probably like working age. So Yeah, it, yeah, it certainly was. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> so, he might have been a cowhand himself, to be fair. <laughs> the kid that he inoculated was called James Phipps. Oh, yeah. Poor James. So he had a mild fever um, and a local lesion, as you'd expect. Uh, but he was fine after a few days. So Fine. Yeah, two months later, Jenner got some got some smallpox and scratched open the kid again. Oh dear. Yeah, on both arms. And uh, he found that he was fine. Nothing happened. Great. So he'd found... Apart from all the scratching and the... You know, yeah. Yeah, the, apart, from <laughs> yeah apart from you know, an adult man taking him and infecting Come him on. with diseases. He, he was generally fine. Jenner. Jenner really fine. I hate you. Right, so... Um, <laughs> speaking of hate, James Phipps, the kid that jenner inoculated yeah didn't actually hate him which is nice isn't it yes uh, he Love gave him. him he gave him a house in his later life as in jenner gave james wow ah. all right okay i'm i'm like i'm on the side of jenner now i think it, okay he's fine. made james phipps famous he compensates no, not famous. <laughs> we're still talking about him like 200 years ago james <laughs> phipps later. wikipedia article consists of when he was eight he was the first receiver of this vaccine later life lived in a house given to given to him by edward jenner Went to Edward Jenner's funeral. That's it. That I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> he did nothing of note in his life. His whole, whole life is defined by that this. That was a very Jenner Edward Jenner centric <laughs> life he led there, according to Wikipedia. I think Edward Jenner probably wrote that Wikipedia article. Imagine if he was allowed to read his <laughs> Wikipedia article. Imagine if Edward Jenner wrote every Wikipedia article in terms of things that are how they're related to Edward Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> Donald J. Trump is the son of 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 the cousin of the son of the son of the son of Edward Jenner. <laughs> and also president of the United States. <laughs> so how it actually works is exposure to the cowpox virus builds immunity to the smallpox virus. We know that. Um, the first step is uh, you inject the cowpox virus into the bloodstream. And the virus then enters the cells and you get a mild fever. And then T cells, which are types of the little keys that that do the fighting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're effect- <laughs> <laughs> they're the cells, the white blood cells that um, form like they they understand how to make a shape in order to attach to or in some way destroy invading cells. Yeah, something like that. Oh so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were talking. We yeah. spoke about these uh, once before. I'll explain it all again. Um, T cells effectively are antibody producing cells. Yeah. So what they do is they'll recognize an antigen, and they'll make lots of antibodies for that. But they also make daughter cells, which are memory T cells. Yes. And they remember mm. that antigen, which is why your immune system works. So you remember effectively every disease you've ever come into contact with. Yeah. You do lose them over time, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing that cowpox and smallpox either have the same key, the same shape, or like so similar that it doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, basically. That's, that's, how it, that's how that works. And it's on that mechanism that a lot of vaccines are based. Mm. Um, just by remembering a really similar, really similar disease or a weakened version of the disease. Mm. Yeah. And that's why you can't vaccinate nice. against the common cold because the common cold constantly evolves into new shapes. It's changing all the time. Is that yeah. why? So annoying. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. That's why you need to get a flu, a flu jab every year. Oh, they're, change, well. they're changing the locks on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So common cold all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't fit. As Luke said, you can lose them over time, mm. the antibody producing cells, um, which is why back when smallpox was, you know, major, uh, you'd get had to get one every three to five years. So that's about how long wow, it lasts. Wow, that's a lot. That's, yeah, that's like tetanus level of frequency. Mm. Yeah, so it's, Tetanus is 10 years, I think. So you lose the cells, but it's more because the virus also changes. Right, okay, mm. yeah. right. Okay. It's those two factors. Yeah. Because if you, if you think about it, uh, viruses uh, and bacteria and other small things like that, 
they have really quick generations. So they're going to mm. mutate faster than we yeah. will. So they've got evolution, but on a really jumped up scale, as in you can make bacteria evolve mm. with it within a week. If and you that, want. I believe, is why we invented sexual reproduction. Well, we didn't invent it, but why <laughs> sexual reproduction? <laughs> the white man invented That's sexual reproduction. Dis- <laughs> who discovered <laughs> sexual reproduction? So I think that Alexander why Graham Bell invented <laughs> sexual <laughs> reproduction <laughs> along with the telephone. <laughs> you'll shut up Um, (laughs) i think that's why sexual reproduction evolved is because every generation it just completely scrambles up so much stuff that then the we we can fight bacteria's ability to rapidly evolve because we change up the the game so drastically by switching everything when we make a new baby is that Mm. correct i don't i I don't have the authority to say that. Uh, okay. I think that's correct. <laughs> it's a nice idea. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, Nobel cool. Prize for you. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's a <laughs> nice <laughs> idea. <laughs> then when you're exposed to the smallpox virus, once you've got the immunity, uh, it comes into your body and your antibody T cells remember the virus hmm. and kick its ass. Fantastic. Kick so you're good. You're, you're immune. Um, so they just destroy it and, and you're good. That's, that's how it works. That's uh, what I tell you guys about the, the future. Not Please our tell future. us about the future. Not our future. Our future. The future. The future of the in past. In reference to the past. The future. So the past, so but the last recent past. Our, our, the more recent past. Our past, but the future of the past From where we, we were, were talking. currently talking about. Yes. Okay. So, as I said, we eradicated smallpox. Um, we well did. Well done us. Yeah, I know. Good on us. Do we have any of it anywhere? I mean, probably. Oh, yeah. we do. I mean, oh, we'll it's in it labs. Saved. Yeah, because I think yeah. there were there was fears that they were going that we would be like bombed with with bio bombs with smallpox in them the u.s army has That's a fun. whole ton of vaccines that they've got great so no one so the u.s stopped uh stopped vaccinating its normal population mm. in i think the 70s when when the was disease eradicated. was eradicated yeah. mm. but they've still got massive stores of it in fact they've got a different type of vaccine that isn't available to the public just for people in the army Wow, because they're, they're be, more likely to be biobombed. Yeah, they yeah. don't give it to them. I don't think they necessarily give it to them, but in the situation that they would need to, but it's ready for they them. can do it. Yeah, because actually, if That's you interesting. vaccinate or inoculate at the same time as someone has given Got smallpox, it. you can actually stop the infection from really getting wow. that bad. Wow, because obviously. There, you've got the really bad virus to fight. Mm. Yeah, but mm. you've also got the really weak virus to fight at the same time. Yeah, so if yeah. you fight the really weak virus, you're then able to fight the bad virus on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's super interesting when you hear about things like that, like the US government has a secret store of two different types of smallpox vaccine, because it's like, there are, the scale of our countries and their operations and all this kind of stuff is so vastly beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like when you have like that big vault in, is it Greenland or Antarctica or something where it's like stored all the seeds of all the plants, although it had a problem at some point and I think a lot of them defrosted. Um, And that's just like, a thing that's been paid for that someone's planned. Yeah. And that's incredible. Oh, like, oh the seed bank. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Mental. So cool. So we've got the modern vaccine, which is slightly different. Um, that was made in the 1950s. Um, and it can be freeze dried. It's heat stable. And it's just generally better than the previous one. So you can basically store it for a long time um, without refrigeration, which is mm. really, really good, good if you're at war or something. Yeah. Yeah, or if yeah. you're in like a war, uh, like a war-torn country or a disaster zone. Yeah, fantastic I just wanna, news. Just keep your vaccine around. I don't want to use the fridge. Keep it handy. Keep it in your pocket. Yeah. So it's made of a virus called Vaccina, or Vaccinia, which is similar to cowpox and smallpox, but lady version. I was about to say it sounds like the female <laughs> version of vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pox virus similar to the both, as I said, but it's not as harmful. They launched the effort to eradicate smallpox in the 1950s. So the U.S. and uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, both gave like millions of vials away to help the effort. Nice. Yeah, which was really nice. Um, Wait, I say millions of vials that they collected from their citizens or millions of vials that they'd been storing for evil purposes? No, not of smallpox, of, of the vaccine. Oh, the vaccine. The vaccine. Why would they okay. give it? Uh, no, uh, I thought you were talking about the development of the vaccine. We're going no, no, to no. go vaccine bomb this country. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they gave over 150 million doses of the vaccine. Ah, cool. Uh, out, which, was, which was good. Luke, you mentioned a global stockpile of seeds. I did, yes. We also have a global stockpile of vaccines. So we've got some held at the World Health Organization headquarters Mm -hmm. in Switzerland, but also a bunch of other countries have got their own stores. France, Germany, Japan, New Zealand, and the United States. And that's all over uh, 31.01 million doses. Wow. 
for mm. something that we we That's got rid of 40, 43 mm. years ago. But we can freeze it, so we can keep it forever. That's no, fine. yeah, we can keep it for like, cool. you know, for ages, which is nice. So, guys, that is the end of Smallpox. Of smallpox. Woo! The Woo! end of Smallpox. The three of us single-handedly eradicated Smallpox. White smallpox men, what can canceled. we do? <laughs> I don't like cancel culture, but I think Smallpox <laughs> should be cancelled. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? Comment. Comment. You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or send and us YouTube. an email. They're on YouTube. They know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried YouTube? <laughs> We're on YouTube, guys. Did you know? New website. 